So as we come to the last in our series of eight talks to go with the book The Perpetual Battle, you'll note that these um, studies have designed to just give you a biblical foundation for the theme um, and also hopefully just to stimulate some thought. They're short and in fact I've given myself just one verse for today, uh, although we'll look at the context a bit as well, but it's 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. Uh, for me this is one of the most comprehensive uh, challenging and encouraging verses in the entire Bible where Peter closes off his second letter saying but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ to him be glory both now and forever amen and it encapsulates um, actually the entirety of the Christian life doesn't it uh, on the one hand I'm trying to get my hand in the camera um, we grow in uh, grace we receive grace grace from God and we uh, give all glory to him um, in Psalm 84 verse 11 this is um, King James version it says the Lord will give grace and glory and I read a sermon by um, Charles Haddon Spurgeon on that verse that said that this verse encompasses the first word and the last word the first word is grace the last word is glory and actually something of that theme is picked up here in 2 Peter 3.18 we receive him grace um, continually so that we may give him glory and glory is our final end and final destination of course we're not just talking about the beginning and the end of the Christian life starting in grace finishing in glory but we're talking about the whole journey every single day of the Christian life is more grace more grace more grace uh, in order that we may give him glory and I want to just unpack that just for context in um, this chapter 2 Peter 3 verse 11 you read since everything will be destroyed in this way what kind of people ought you to be you ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming 2 Peter's all about um, the certainty that Jesus will come back that then he will finally banish not only all suffering but all false teaching sweep it away uh, and finally um, he will come and create the new heavens and the new earth and in the light of this final destruction this great cataclysmic day of judgment what sort of people should we be says Peter well you should be holy and godly you should live lives and preparedness for meeting your maker who is holy uh, and you will stand before God and and we look forward um, in anticipation of the day of God and speed it's coming yes for sure the final end is scary because God's coming back in, in judgment and his full glory will be revealed to all the world but actually if we find our life hidden in Christ that day we can anticipate with expectation that finally it'll be at the end of, all, end of all suffering the end of all pain and actually you know I'm recording this just as we're thinking about um, the war still ongoing in Ukraine and destruction that continues to be um, meted out on those people and Putin's terrible regime and I'm glad that Jesus is coming back to be the judge to, to call to account uh, everybody and that everyone will quake and bow in the presence of his glorious presence on the final day but those of us who've known his grace and glory in this life need not fear because it will be a day of final vindication a final going home to be with the Lord so let's just let's spend a few minutes looking at those two wonderfully rich theological words from him grace um, well the Sunday school definition is still pretty good isn't it uh, grace G-R-A-C-E speaks of God's riches, riches or richest at Christ's expense. Uh, grace reminds us that, that God spent himself poor for us, as 2 Corinthians 8 puts it, um, that he shows us his undeserving, wonderfully lavishing forgiveness, not only to begin the Christian life, but every day we come back and drink again from the fountain of his grace um, because we continue to fall short. I've been rereading um, a book by um, 
the the, the, the teacher at um, Fulleth Seminary um, in psychology and counselling called Lewis Smeads. It's actually quite an old book. I read this nearly 30 years ago, in fact. It's called Shame and Grace. And it's very helpful, really, pointing out that um, learning to live with shame is part of uh, an understanding of how grace works in our life. So there is such a thing as true shame, there's such a thing as false shame. Um, true shame happens actually when we realise that in the light of God's glory we fall far short and that drives us actually to the cross again to receive his grace. False shame is when we carry around the baggage of unworthiness, feeling condemned um, either by ourselves or by others or by societal expectations around us. Um, he makes the point that's worth just pondering actually, he says the difference between getting what I deserve and getting what I'm worth is important to note. So getting what I deserve is what is due to me, what is uh, what is earned. And actually, he, you know, becoming a Christian is realising that we say to God, I d please spare me getting what I deserve, because what I deserve actually is eternal condemnation outside of Christ. But getting what I'm worth actually is truly understanding what wonderful grace is all about. Even though I'm worthy of his judgment, I'm nevertheless made in his image. And all humanity has got that sort of imprint of God upon them. And really to not know God and live in God's presence as he expects you to is to not live up to what you're worth. You're not giving yourself your full potential. Um, God doesn't make junk and you are worthy of so much more than either you or the world uh, attributes to me. So if this, if grace is, is actually truly getting what I'm worth, being restored to being a child of God, how do I grow in this grace? Yeah, for sure, you know, I need to understand this grace to become a Christian, to repent of my sins and to be forgiven. But actually, Paul, Peter says we, we grow in grace. We grow in our knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as is often pointed out, the Greek word gnosis, um, you can see the etymology of knowledge there in that word, picks up the idea of both um, knowing about, so we continue searching the scriptures, we continue studying God's word, so that we may know in more and more about Jesus and put our confidence and trust in him, but it also picks up the idea of knowing relationally, you know, as a father to a child or as a spouse, uh, one to another, or as good friends to each other. That knowledge, we grow in that knowledge. The more we spend time with each other, the more we know each other, the more we can anticipate each other, the more we can enjoy each other's company. Um, and uh, the way that we grow in grace is by growing in both aspects of that knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So grace finally has a sort of two-fold focus we keep looking back to the cross where we draw upon that deep well of God's forgiveness um, take me to the cross again and again because there I can find my sins forgiven and, and find great assurance but actually as John Piper points out Faith also has a f uh, faith in future grace as a future orientated direction that God will continue to pour out his grace if we trust in him. Um, and in a sense, growing in his grace is appreciating that he'll continue to supply all that we need in Christ. I'm just conscious I'm running out of time here. So secondly, glory. Um, how do I give him glory? How do I show him glory? Well, yeah, clearly that's the last day thing when you'll come in glory, but I think it also implies now as well. So now is to do with everything that we can do in this life to make God look great, to make God look worthy. Um, you know, the glory of his creation is seen in the dazzling beauty of the world around us. And in a sense, it, 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 it points to how great God is and the Christian life similarly is to be doing that, um, to get used to the idea of deflecting everything to God so that he gets the praise and he gets the glory. It doesn't mean belittling humanity, it doesn't mean belittling yourself, saying you're nothing, 
but actually I'm a grace person who is grateful and deflects that gratitude up to God so that he, he is center stage in everything. And, and what we're doing now is default reflecting that glory back to God again and again and again. And we'll be doing it for all eternity. We'll spend eternity glorifying him and reveling in the wonder of being in his presence. Um, Romans eleven thirty six talks about from him and through him and to him are all things and to him be the glory forever and ever. God will get the last word and I'm glad about that as I'm sure you are and all glory will go to him and therefore actually that gives us confidence in this life. Um, we receive again and again his great grace receiving it receiving it receiving it it's it's unquenchable it keeps being poured out upon us again and again again every time i confess my sins i receive more grace and my response will be to glorify him in everything you know wake up each day and say lord what am i what can i do today what can i offer you to you today that will give you the glory and people may see how great you are let's pray thank you lord for just those two wonderfully rich words that from you we receive grace and to you we give glory and we pray that that might shape everything we do in our christian life this day and until we see you in all your glory in the future in jesus name